to the days when I have to stand on the top. <laughs> that means there are so many of you I have to be up a little higher. So it's a two-step day today. Good job. <laughs> there was a cartoon on Facebook showing a person on the ground surrounded by a group of people throwing their Bibles at the person who was on the ground. The phrase that went with the picture was, if you're using the Bible to hurt other people, you're using it wrong. The cartoon wants to remind us that the Word of God is not supposed to be used to belittle or harm others. Now, I have been in conversations with colleagues where the Bible was used as a weapon to prove one point of view was right, while the rest of us were just absolutely as wrong as we could be. And the conversation was painful and frustrating. And the connection that I felt with those participants, well, that was broken. I suspect we have all left a conversation feeling bruised and battered because when we use the Bible to belittle, shame, humiliate, or condemn others, we're using it wrong. In John's Gospel today, the Pharisees uh, saw Jesus teaching in the temple courtyard. Now the Pharisees who served the temple did not like Jesus and they did not like the fact that whenever he appeared, the crowds would gather around him as he sat down to teach. Whenever the Pharisees encountered Jesus in John's Gospel, they did their best to trip him up and to get him to say something that they could use to discredit him or even better, to put him on trial for having said something so terribly wrong. And this day was no different. As Jesus began to teach, the Pharisees and their law clerks, clerks known as the scribes, walked up to Jesus, dragging a woman along with them. Now Jesus was widely loved by the regular people who gathered in the temple courtyard. He was loved by the regular people because he taught God's love and God's grace, God's acceptance and forgiveness to those who were too often condemned by the religious system of their day. Jesus would tell the poor and the outcasts and those who were lost about God's love and God's forgiveness. He told the peasants that their powerful rulers, the rich and those with position, were faithful only when they served the least and the last. He told the wealthy that their riches would hinder their entrance into the gates of heaven. And more often than not, his message would tell the authorities that their use of the Bible was wrong. So the authorities didn't really like Jesus, they didn't like his message, and they really didn't like it when he challenged their authorities. So today, this day, the Pharisees and the scribes brought a woman to Jesus who claimed she had been caught in the very act of adultery. They wanted Jesus to announce that she should be stoned to death. They wanted Jesus to make a mistake in his interpretation of the law so they could pounce on him to condemn a regular person so that the regular people would see that he was really not all that lovable. They wanted to lessen Jesus' stature in the eyes of his followers. But Jesus, he didn't reply to the authorities. In fact, he said nothing as he bent down and began to write in the dirt. Now scholars for millennia have been trying to figure out what Jesus was writing. Some say that he was writing the actual law of Moses from Leviticus chapter 20, verse 10, that says if a man commits adultery, both he and the woman shall be put to death. Because writing the real law would point out the fact that the Pharisees were picking and choosing in condemning only the woman. Now some scholars believe that Jesus was writing a question asking for the actual proof that they, the woman had been caught in the very act of adultery, which would have been uncomfortable at best. And others believe that Jesus was writing something that only he and the authorities could read. To be honest, we don't know what Jesus was writing. But we do know that the very act of bending over and writing in the dirt was a recognizable sign that Jesus was not going to have that conversation with this group of people. And when Jesus refused to engage in that conversation with the authorities, he took control of the subject away from the authorities. 
And the more they pushed Jesus to condemn the woman to death, the more he ignored the conversation. And the more he ignored them, the more they lost control of the issue as they became angrier and angrier. Eventually, Jesus straightened up and said, If you've never sinned, go ahead, cast the first stone. Then he bent down and began writing again. So rather than talk about this particular woman and her alleged crime, Jesus turned the conversation to the real issue, how the Bible was being used. Rather than debate the fine points of the law, Jesus focused on the issue that mattered. Rather than let the authorities define the parameters of the conversation, Jesus took time to challenge the conversation. He took his time and then challenged the Pharisees in how they were using the Bible. Because like many of us today, like many of us today, the Pharisees were picking and choosing the verses and the laws that suited their particular agenda. Rather than look at the whole of the Bible, Rather than look at the whole of the chapter, rather than even look at the whole of the verse, the Pharisees pulled out a portion of a Bible verse so that they could attack Jesus and the woman in front of him. Rather than looking for God's message in the Bible, for God's truth, the Pharisees used the truth that they wanted God to have. The Pharisees tried to use the Bible to hurt the woman, hurt Jesus, and hurt his followers. They tried to use the Bible to guarantee that God would agree with them rather than reading the Bible to make sure that they agreed with God. The Pharisees made the mistake of using the Bible as a stone to throw at others. Now the law of Moses gave permission to the righteous to punish lawbreakers by stoning them to death. And so the Pharisees tried to use the Bible as biblical stones to throw at Jesus and the woman. And again, using the Bible to throw stones has become commonplace today. We hear it from our politicians. They use the Bible to try to hurt their opponents, control public opinion, and grab power. Denominations use the Bible to tell everybody else that, oh, they are so wrong. We Christians use the Bible to commit the sin of better than-ness. Because, of course, we Christians are better than anybody else God created. Did you catch the last part? God created. We throw biblical stones to keep others out rather than to invite each other into God's love and forgiveness. We throw biblical stones at each other to prove how righteous and holy we are and how lousy and unworthy everybody else is. We use the Bible to throw stones to hurt each other, to hurt our faith, and we ultimately hurt God. Because when we use the Bible to throw stones, we are using it wrong. So rather than engage in biblical stone throwing, perhaps we can confess that we really do like to judge others. And that being the judge is not our place in creation. Rather than using the Bible to, to, to throw stones, perhaps we can confess that sometimes we like to use the Bible so that we can be better than those around us. Rather than engage in biblical stone throwing, perhaps we can look at the Bible as the story of God's love, God's forgiveness, and God's new life. Rather than using the Bible to throw biblical stones about who's theologically right and who's theologically wrong, perhaps we can spend our time living the gospel as we feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and care for the sick. Because if we stopped throwing biblical stones, perhaps those who are watching us might begin to recognize what a beautiful, God-inspired, God-filled book the Bible really is. Perhaps if we stop throwing biblical stones at each other, the people who look at those of us in the Christian church as a bunch of hypocrites 
might actually begin to recognize us as Christians because of our love. Jesus looked up and he saw the crowd was gone. No one, no one was left to condemn the woman. Jesus proved that God's love and forgiveness were stronger than any of the biblical stones the authorities wanted to throw. God's love and forgiveness are stronger than our need to judge. God's love and forgiveness are stronger than our need to throw stones. So rather than use the Bible as a weapon, perhaps we can think of the Bible as one giant, tasty, soft, appetizing marshmallow peep. <laughs> Because when we use God's love, it's a book of love. It's a book of invitation. It's a book that invites us. It doesn't want to hurt us. Amen. Amen.